It's time for AgriChat, the official podcast of the Tales of the Agronaut blog and stalwart gaming community, where we talk about stuff and things and the stuff about the things, and sometimes gaming. I'm Belgast, and let's start the show. Hey folks, it's that time again. Time for another episode of AgriChat. This is episode 487. Tonight I'm joined by Ashgar. Hello. Ammo. Hello. Godra. Hello. Phelan. Hello. Tim. Hello. Why was I first? I don't know. Why Why was it even that? <laughs> Mine was because I was confused about being first. Well, I did everybody I else out of order, too. too. Like, oh. yeah, you just did. subtly out of order, but, you know. It was totally planned. Mm. Y'all, mm. y'all throw me for a loop every week anyway, so, like, I might as well do it back to you. <laughs> fair. That's a completely fair statement. Anyway, um, so I think Kodra and I may be the only ones really engaged, but there's a brand new uh, Path of Exile League that came out on Friday. And I'll get back I to you am, as soon as I'm done with FF14. I, I am still in the campaign. I am nearing the end of uh, Act 8. Um, I no, very it, little Act bit 9. It, but I bounced very fast. I, I freaking love this league. It's great. <laughs> I really like the league mechanic. Uh, I'm I'm making a bad life decision. You're, which is, you're you're being melee. I am trying to do something that doesn't have a well established build guide, and I'm seeing if I can figure it out. Oh, I know this pain. God's pain. It, it it is figure out a bull, and there are a lot of people trying to figure it out right now. To be yeah. completely fair. And part of the problem is, is there were some major changes in the tree. On the Marauder side ish, yeah. yeah, that's the part I'm adjusting to. Because like there used to be a well trodden path for a Sunder, like leveling as Sunder, and a lot of it has changed a bit this time around. A lot of it hasn't. Like you can still beeline basically to Resolute Technique to get started and uh, take some take all the stuff along the way. Yeah. Okay. But also remember that I am. Uh... Not necessarily, PO- like, I am definitely not POE PhD certified yet, and I'm definitely not, like, melee certified. So, some simple stuff like, why is my damage doing terrible in Act 3? Oh, because one of Because the you're on an attack-based build and have not upgraded your weapon. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, attack-based builds, and this doesn't matter if you're like a bow attack or uh, a, a wep- like a, a melee weapon attack, you kind of need to be looking for the next base and then throwing whatever the hell you have at it to get something workable to keep leveling. And with the state of the game currently, that is essences. You throw an essence at it. Yeah, yeah, basically. I mean, uh, I also have two bindings now, so... Uh, I, I meant what I said. Oh, okay. Why? Because you can guarantee uh, damage affixes that way. And those are that important? Yep. Yeah, that's really all that matters on <laughs> on a, a physical weapon is the handful of physical um, rolls. Ideally, like, a really, really good weapon would have flat fizz, percent fizz, and attack speed. But yep. two out of three is sufficient for a level like. But just having the latest base is usually enough to allow you to limp along. Good to know. What they're doing right now with the league mechanic is, I think, one of the coolest league mechanics I've ever seen. Yeah, I absolutely love it. Um, I, I, There's definitely some interesting things happening right now where, like, I am spending a lot of time going back and, like, looking forward to building up my town. Uh, and also rapidly running out of gold. That that improves as you get higher. Like, I've got 15,000 gold in the bank at the moment, um, and every map that I run gets me another 2k or so. And I, when I say map, I'm meaning actual level in the campaign, because it's not two maps, but I still think of them as maps. So, like, gold pressure 
is less as you level. Yeah, um, I, I got to I, I'm, I hit like Act Six, and I mean, I sort of checked out, but Act Six by is then, a I could feel it, it, it is still Path of Exile. That part yeah. hasn't changed. And the, and I think that's really for me. It's like, oh, this is a really cool mechanic, but I really wanted to give after having played a bunch of Last Epoch, I really wanted to give Path of Exile like the old college try because I thought I. You know, I am very hard on that game for accessibility reasons. Having played this other game, like, do I still feel the same way? Or is there, you know, is it like, um, you know, what Global Chat in Path of in uh, Last Epoch likes to say is, hey, you know, once you feel like you know this game, you can play a more serious game like Path of Exile. Um, yeah. And I don't agree I don't think I buy that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't like having having now done it. Like I don't. I I'm very happy in Last Epoch, and I think it's only going to get better. I don't. I am. It, it, I am. It, it will be over time. I'm really glad that this was a good league because I feel like it it lets me get a a better kind of like if it had been a crappy league, it would be hard for me to say to to know for sure how I feel about it. And I really I think it's I, I think it's a really cool league mechanic. It yeah, is. I really I really enjoy sending off shipments and then 45 minutes later going back to my town and in theory I've collected a bunch of resources in that amount of time and then pick up my shipment and then send off another one and do some maintenance of the town and then go back in and, and you know adventure for another 45 minutes like it's a great little cycle. And also, like, gold is interesting because it makes things feel worthwhile that maybe I would have skipped through faster. Like, I'm I'm full clearing maps way more often than I normally do just because, like, those tasty packs of rares are going to drop a lot of gold and I need the gold to do things in the town. It's almost like having a unified currency is actually good. Yeah, except it's so weird that it's a unified currency and like, but wait, it, it is not it's, tradable. It's not tradable, so it's it's only a currency for a handful of things. Yeah, like no, none of the things that the came from this league, I think, are tradable to use for playing the game. Yeah, like I mean, it's it's basically a time gate because there's Combined a lot with of mecha- some actual time gates. Yeah, like there's a bunch of mechanics that that you know you in order to do you know x you have to have spent you know so much time doing y and gathered up enough resources you know that you only can get through doing town mechanics like uh act six was a big gate because act six is like the first time that you see bismuth and then there's a lot of town upgrades that are gated by the existence of bismuth so like once you can harvest that you can then open up um like the recombinator, for example, and the uh, disenchanter, all are tied to finding bismuth. So you have to at least this for. you have to clearly, at least get to my six. town is a hovel disaster slum because I did not. I was I did get to Act Six, but I did not know what bismuth was for. Yeah, it's like in the tech tree, it becomes a gate, and you have to be able to find it somewhere and. I was not able to find any sources of it until I hit Act Six, and then they were everywhere in Act Six. That that is the other weird thing is like the only way to seed like the mining resource is by like finding it out in the world. Yeah, you commented mm-hmm. that this was kind of like a poor idle game, but it's definitely not designed to be that way. Like they definitely want you to play the game to get all the stuff you need to do the town. So I'll say you have to like. It, it looks like an idle game, but it's not an idle game, and I think that's what was throwing me off. See, it's more to me like it. It feels more like Garrisons or something like that from World of Warcraft, where it's uh, you know, by playing the game, you get some resource that you're now going to pour into your town. So I never did Garrison, so I don't have a comment on that okay and so maybe this is just my first time experiencing this particular design like usually like if i look go back to like the old any old strategy game where you're building up a settlement like 
you set your workers to working and then they produce what they're supposed to produce. And like you try and get yourself to like a self-sustaining loop. Yeah. You, you, you are the worker. <laughs> yeah. <and in> this, <laughs> you are the worker. You are getting the gold and you are finding the, the, the mining. Yeah. And, and, and like the people are just processing it into various things that you can trade with it. But like, you're, you're the one doing the resource gathering here. Well, the resource identifying you, 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 yeah, you I guess you're prospecting. Resources. Yeah. You're prospecting. You find the places for your miners to go and mine, but it means you don't really need a lot of people dedicated to mining because they're only going, they're going to like run out of your resources probably faster than you're bringing them into the city. Yeah. I've only got a couple people on each machine. Like I basically like have one person doing each of the things and it seems to be plenty for me to like, I will build up a backlog and then like overnight last night, they farmed it all down and they were all idle in the morning. But like, what's been cool is that the shipments are actual viable stuff. Like there's been several that the rares in the shipments are way better than the average. Yes. On the ground. Yes, so, I, I, I dropped a chest in the bank that had like 40 to two different resists and some other relevant stats on it. Like I've I've gotten several upgrades. I've, I've thrown other decent looking items in the bank and a lot of times it's fully linked when you get it for however many sockets it's got. It definitely made the leveling process much easier to have access to these random, better than average items showing up. Um, I'm curious. Uh, do you do you ship full loads at this point? Um, I okay. So starting off, I shipped roughly 200 value every time, and that held for a while because at 200, it was a break point that I noticed that I would was almost guaranteed to get a unique. And then as my town leveled up again, that break points around 2000 value now where I get a, a unique every time. And oh, I'm just using that as a I'm just using that as a, a a frame of reference for I'm getting better than average loot. Is the max value determined by how many sailors are aboard a ship? Sort of. Uh, so the number of sailors aboard a ship um, dictates how difficult the run is. So the more sailors you have, and more importantly, the more levels of sailing expertise you have. So if you've got like one that's a five sailing expertise, it is going to have significantly more weight in success than just loading it up with like four ones. Um so like it seems like it's total levels of experience um on the ship is what matters and like as you start loading the ship the risk meter will start going up and like I'm okay with oh, a little bit is in the, the risk, risk meter risk meter the red thing on the side Yes yes that is telling you how likely it is that your ship is going to get lost at sea or attacked by pirates or anything like that Ah, okay. I am. I am shipping non-risky shipments. I did. I thought that was like, oh, this is how much you can possibly fit on this boat. That's like <laughs> no. I added more Ooh. value, and I. You said two hundred, so I was just always keeping it around two hundred, which is always about medium risk. But I haven't lost a shipment yet. Right. Yeah, and that's what I was doing too for a while. Is I was I was accepting a certain amount of risk. And now it's, I've got like a, a, a five and a two and a one on my ship, um, for expertise and I can ship 2000 value all day long and it barely shows up as any risk. Um, and that seems to be fine. I'm getting some good stuff. I'm getting decent bubblegum currency. I've gotten a chaos off of it. That's a bunch of Val orbs off of it. Um, it seems to be that if you have ore, you're going to get gear. If you have produce, you're going to get currency. Ah, this explains things. I've So 
uh, the other thing I've been doing is I've been shipping what the city's been asking for. What does right. that do? I think it improves the amount of stuff you get, but I'm not sure. I've also been kind of doing that as well, but like I usually will ship more than one thing at a time. I don't know. I don't have it necessarily figured out. I figured out a way that like I'm getting back good stuff and I'm rolling with it until it, it seems to not be that case. Cause like, I'm just winging it. I'm not, I've not read any guides on this. I would love to see the completed tech tree to find out what you need to build, when to build what or to get whatever. But well, you're, so what I do know is that one of the currencies you get from this is those runes. And I think this is yes. the only way to get those. It is. And, and so like, you're going to have to start shipping some serious stuff so you can get power runes to get the broken stuff. Right. And I, and I, I'm getting two or three or four of them every single load. Oh, are you getting power runes now? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm getting probably uh, not. Probably not. Those ones people are speculating will be worth a ridiculous amount. Possibly. Yeah, like I've got life and sun and bound and river and war. So far. Yeah. So I think war is one of the ones that's required. Power runes, 15 power runes, which is apparently going to be the rare material for this, is what's required to get uh projectiles return to you on a sword. Oh yeah, Nimbus. Nimbus on a sword. <laughs> Nimbus on a sword, yes. But because it's on a sword, that means it doesn't work for all the various uh, bow-based things people would use it for. Uh-huh, and uh-huh. instead, we are going to have League of Molten Strike. League of Molten Strike. I like how uh, one mana, is it one mana left? Yeah. Connor, yeah. Was like, yeah, I think this is going to be the most powerful build. And then everyone saw that and is like, oh, this is going to make this build ridiculous. This build is going, yeah. I mean, it frees up a ring. The thing is, it doesn't make that build that much stronger. It frees up a ring slot. Ah. Because if that build was using Nemesis. Yeah, Nemesis is probably going to be a little bit cheaper because the demand won't be quite as high. There are still plenty of builds that can't, like, this only works for builds that want to use a two-handed sword. And plenty of builds want to use Nemesis and do not want to use a two-handed sword. But it kind of makes me want to play a splitting steel build. <laughs> yeah, that'll be silly. It would be. Because <laughs> that definitely likes a two-headed sword. Yeah, like that, that's that been the really cool thing is like there's this runesmithing thing. And there's just some wild stuff on it. Like, you know, that, that really fun burning enemies you kill have a 10% chance to explode dealing a tenth of their maximum life in fire damage. You just throw it on a weapon. It's cool. I noticed that uh, uh, Rewald's curse is, or curse, not curse. It, it goes the, on a scepter. <laughs> you can get the, yeah, you can get the wolves on a set on a scepter or whatever it is. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Culling strike is just available to put on a weapon so that you don't have to do any, you know, mana forged arrow shenanigans to, you know, work that into your build or, you know, go with one of the, you know, cull on crit options. 25 chance, 25% chance to trigger level 10 summon raging spirits on kill. The other thing was I saw the soul rest modifier is available on an enchant. There's a, one of the things that I saw in the, uh, early reveals was that one of the, the enchants is basically replica headhunter. I don't know what items it goes on, but. It was the replica headhunter buff, which isn't quite as good as real headhunter, but like if you can just enchant it on a thing, that seems powerful. Recombinators are real expensive. Recombinators are one of those items that allows you to do things that's kind of cheating. Yeah, so like I will probably use recombinators um in an attempt to get a multi plus spell scepter at some point um because like it's not the end of the it's not super hard to get like a plus all spell gems scepter and it's not outrageous to get a plus all fire gems scepter but getting them both on the same one is really really hard um but like to use the recombinator when i socket two items in here it's wanting to charge me 500 gold and like 
286 dust and I'm using relatively low items. So that probably goes up as the items go up and the disenchanting dust is going to be a major gate. Disenchanting goes very slowly. What are you disenchanting? Rares. You just chuck any rares that are not good rares into the disenchanter and it turns it into dust. Is there like a large thing that you can s- start put put a big thing of them in there? Yeah, so basically it's it's a normal size stash tab, not the deluxe stash tab, and you just chuck items in it and then your disenchanters slowly work their way through it, but it'll take like 30 minutes per item to disenchant yeah. an item. But presumably and- you can like level uh you can level it up right maybe? and and it, yeah and as it levels up you it goes faster um you know it takes less time um but yeah so like it's that becomes a thing that i've also got a dump tab that i always have a dump tab just because it's more convenient than actually sorting through things when i'm <laughs> running stuff um but now i'm stealing items from my dump tab and filling back up the disenchanter so that like it's not going to run empty and i will eventually get my dust that i need to do the rest of these projects because again later on that becomes a gate of having dust to to unlock additional stuff but like it's it's a really cool system and i like i really hope that they make this a permanent thing like it's added a bunch of cool stuff um gambling is exactly that but if you hit a rare it's a better rolled rare than usual um i was able to find i think a scepter through gambling that was pretty good um, what if what if gwen wasn't terrible yeah it's basically it's like what if gwen gave you rog items because <laughs> like honestly- rog has always been good for crafting items if it's a thing that that it crafts well but like the the Faust is gambling is pretty decent items. I wish Gwynnon gave you more useful stuff. Yeah, so I, okay, I just, I just rolled on, like, I grabbed an item and I got a scepter with three fire stats on it. It's probably better than what I probably switch over to this thing. The, the biggest improvement that came with this patch, though, I think hands down is the boss bars. <laughs> Oh, so th- yes, I was noticing that the boss bars are there for controller. I thought they were always there for keyboard and no, no, no it's brand new for new. us too. Oh, yeah, and those like are nice. The best part about them, though, is you can now instantly tell when a boss is going invulnerable for a phase transition. Yeah, that's man. So, so that you're I've not going to waste cooldowns. No, they. Uh, these are new on controller. Are they? Yeah, I remember a boss. I remember boss bars. No, I mean boss had health bars before. Yeah, but not. There like is a big, big giant bar boss across bar across the top of the screen. It turns very obviously different when a boss is going invulnerable, which wasn't, which is new. I remember the boss bar at the top of the screen. I don't. I'm pretty sure I remember them indicating when the boss had like various invulnerabilities, but not really. Because like Hillock, obviously, you know regains all of his health and the start of uh on the beach yeah there was no obvious indicator of his invulnerability phase when he did that now there is interesting this is more useful later obviously yeah i mean it's it's been great knowing exactly when i can can duck out of combat and wait for the boss to become hittable again i don't know it'll be interesting to see like the the biggest difference that i noticed is Content density has been cranked up for this patch. What do you mean by that? Way more individual league mechanics appearing on the same map. Like, usually campaign maps would have one or two things on the map at any given time. I've had maps that had Einhar and Nico and Legion and the new league mechanic and strong boxes and a val side area so the master thing changed last patch right but but i 
Like I didn't, but yeah, like I didn't see it during leveling, but now, yeah, it's like, it feels like I'm running a map during the campaign. Like there's just so much, so many more rares, so many more appearances of like rogue exiles. And you may have two or three or four of them on a single map. Yeah. Like it's the density of stuff while leveling like a, like a flex on their competition. It's 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 great. Like I mean, in in it, I'm already hunting for gold, so I'm sticking around to kill a lot of this stuff because it gives me gold. I, on the other hand, as mentioned, uh, have mostly not started because FF14, but I yep. did have poked my face in. Uh, started a Marauder, but also started a Shadow because it's about time to dig into the mind, mines build. Which mines build? Uh, I think Exsanguinate <laughs> seems like an interesting mines build. But also, if this doesn't work, X Blast is right there, right? It is uh, on Trickster. I'm guessing. Probably, yeah. Like, but like, this does not need like nothing about this build requires a Trickster. Like, it is perfectly viable. I think to run this on either one, you just get more frenzy charges on Trickster. Yeah, I think I'm. I I am sad. Is where I'm at right now, because yes, it seems like Saboteur Minds is dead, or at least. I think pe- so. I think people are undervaluing the power of Born in the Shadows, and I think people are also undervaluing uh, Saboteur's recovery, which Trickster just does not have, especially in a mind build. Like well, the strongest thing for survivability on Trickster is Energy Shield Leech, which oh. does not work on Mines. Right. So, like, I think people are undervaluing Saboteur for this particular reason. That's fair. I hadn't th- thought about that. I am probably going to go Trickster. Uh, because I am going to go uh, Flicker Strike. Yes. Yes. Flicker Strike is a very funny build. I in think a while since I played it, but everything I am looking at right now makes me think Flicker Strike is going to be bonkers. Flicker Strike is probably going to be absolutely fucking nuts because it got all the melee buffs. It got a much higher than normal melee buff. Actually, it was good before. Right. Like, wasn't, you know, top whatever, whatever, but... Did use those before. It was a lot before. of fun, and it's one of the most progressed any of my characters have ever, has ever been. Beating out the Venom Gyre character? Oh, the Venom Gyre character barely made it to anything. They're super fun, oh. but they suck at maps. Ah. You actually what? need to do work? They're awful. I, so I, I have... Here, here's my challenge. I have a specific... Uh, I have a specific MTX that I really like, and I really want to play with. Mm-hmm, and it mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. doesn't look very good on the trickster's body. It needs a big body because it's the it's the deer head. Sounds and like you should play a slam build. Cough, cough. Okay, guess what I'm doing? I'm <laughs> playing a slam build. I am playing a build. I, I am trying to get into a build that uh, my good friend Ash has advised me might be bad. But I'm going to see if it's not. And if it is bad, well, I'm still a juggernaut in Molten Strike of Zenith League. <laughs> and maybe I will level up a trickster and maybe that trickster will uh, get me the currency to buy what is probably going to be a bunch of ridiculously expensive items. <laughs> because everyone's going to be playing this build. I mean, the Deep Delver is going to be playing this build. I don't know. This build has a lot of hype on the Reddit for it. And, sure, and I will be honest. that is honest, not necessarily an indication of what people actually play. Yeah, but I, I'll be honest. Anyone who is just mapping and remembers what Necropolis was like can watch Connor go and blind run T17 maps not caring about what Affix's role and say, yeah, I want to do that too. And they won't. Most people will not get Nemesis. Most people will not get Original Sin. They will not be doing this thing. It's true. You can watch somebody do something on wait. YouTube that you will not be doing. Wait, wait. So does the Zenith build have both of those? I think it does. Oh my god. That is I don't think original build. Because it's a, it's a strength stacker. So Replica Alberons was involved. And Nemesis fixes uh, resi- enemy resists. Or Original Sin fixes enemy resists. Yeah, but at least at least replica Alberons you can run heist until you get like that is that seems like an easier proposition than actually getting a uh, flawless run of sanctum (laughs) (laughs) 
or more so a flawless run of Sanctum after getting Sanctum to drop an already rare item. I mean, that build I, it was, I think, like, that, that was a multi-mirror build. So, again, people will not be duplicating these results. It's true. Although, yes, oh, right. we're going to go into the build not understanding they're not going to duplicate these results. Yeah, I was curious. There are no original sins yet. Ooh, it's are there any... day uh, two. That, yeah, but now I'm going to have to check. Are there any sandstorms? Uh, yes, there are four of them. They're How? going for... Between 13 and 30 divines. Sounds right. I I am happy. I, I've gotten eight chaos so far. I was able to spend it very wisely on some specific pieces and will largely be able to make it to red maps without upgrading anything. We'll see. Like the, the build I am playing right now is I, I am playing this build because it seemed like, you know, a thing that was going to be super tanky. Uh, like it's, it's an endurance, it's an endurance charge stacker and endurance charges seem pretty good right now. Well, and I think, I think folks did not fully account for just how much better armor is right now. How is armor better? Because the ability to bypass armor is worse. Yeah. Yeah. That, that largely went away. Like crush armor is a thing to damage your ability to defend with armor, but like it is nothing like just overwhelm used to be overwhelm used to be, oops, you have no armor <laughs> and it felt miserable. Uh, crush armor. I've gotten crushed numerous times and it's n not super noticeable. Like it's a thing that's happening, but also it's not the end of the d the world when it happens. Yeah. Like I have, I have been shocked by how survivable I am right now. Right. Yeah. Just, just having reasonable armor right now feels kind of like doing all of the taken as nonsense used to feel. Yeah. The only time I've died was when I realized, Hey, I probably need to be upgrading my weapons. And I was fighting against mercy, which was hitting my one resistance. I had zero in. I died once, but I don't remember what I died to at all. Uh, I had uh, zero lightning resistance on the Tolman fight for Mercy. Ah, uh, okay. So here's the thing that I find so bizarre. Lightning Spire totems Traps. are just outrageously rippy when an enemy gives uh, fights you with them. Oh, this has been true since they came into existence why, in Arch Nemesis. Wh why is that not a thing that ever gets played by players? Because Lightning Spire Trap is like, that's not a thing. We, we don't have access to that ability. Okay. That, light, Lightning that, Spire that Trap is, not is a bad. Thing. Okay. So, so that's not the same thing. It's completely awful. Yeah, no, it's not the same thing. Okay. Because like all this time I was thinking, okay, that's, that's that thing, right? That is ungodly. <laughs> like, why so, no one's to be playing that? Lightning trap, quite good. Lightning spire trap, garbage. Okay. Yeah. Whatever the NPCs have is just awful. Like, yeah, no, their terrible. version is just not available to players, and it is just completely terrible. Like, it is like one of the few things that I care about avoiding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mostly, uh, when I was playing Hex Blast, I didn't care about it because I honestly never even noticed it because I was killing everything so fast. Uh, Hex Blast's numbers were, are very high. Um, you will get then, to notice some things now. Hmm? You will get to notice some things now because you have to stand closer to them. Yeah, so what I was going to say is, and then uh, uh, the Forest League happened... And I gave everything too much survivability that I couldn't just, you know, walk over like they wouldn't instantly die from a uh, a single volley of hex blast mines. And then I realized those traps are the absolute worst. <laughs> and now you can do that same thing to your T-17s. You shouldn't. Yeah, you can get the force into your T-16 and T-17s. Maybe don't. I'm honestly looking forward to getting to a point where I can like do them in T16s because they were kind of fun. I mean, I don't know if they'll be quite as juicy reward wise, but the forest was a weird league. 
Sure was. I played some weird builds during that league too, which I took a look at when I logged back in. So I skipped last league. I, I think that was the league that I played uh, Penance Brand of Dissolution or whatever. Dissipation. Yep. Dissipation. That, that was new, that league. Speaking of ascendancies that nobody plays, uh, that is a thing people play on Assassin now. I mean, that ability is still good. It's oh, just absolutely. not ungodly good like it was. Like, I had awful gear, and I can still make it through T16s now with it without much issue. I, I in in the before or in between times between the, the the previous league ending and the new league starting, I tried out some of my old characters that I've not played in a while, and that one's just as potent as it was. It may not be as fast at killing, but it's still real killy. Oh no! I like I'm going to enjoy this league. I find the league mechanic very fun. I want to try this out. I'm kind of with Tam in, like, I can't wait for Last Epoch's endgame to feel as interesting enough. Yeah, yeah. Like... Yeah, I just wish there was more of it. I mean, that's it. Like, I... Like, everything that they have done to this point has been awesome. It's just not quite dense enough yet. I have so many builds that I want to try that I'm going to be occupied for a long time. See, I, what's there. I, I wish that was my thing. I like doing content ad nauseum, and I reach a point where, like, I just, I've seen everything that Last Epoch can produce over and over and over and over. Yeah, I can see that. Like, like I, I, I've struggled to get through Monoliths this time. Exile, which is try all of their crazy things. Yeah, that's the th- that is what I will say is, and, like, I am really struggling right now because... I don't have a build guide I am meticulously following. Like, I'm mostly just trying to wing it. There are times where I'm like, oh, I'm way too weak for, like, I am in an Act 3. If I am feeling this weak right now, something is wrong. See, and this is the reason why I keep playing RF as my starter. And then after I get to a stable point with RF, I start building experimental builds. Because I can fund yeah, the experimental builds I, with I feel like the you, good build. You and I have a different amount of time to play this game. This is true. I don't have kids. Uh, and like leveling up and that's the other thing is leveling up in Last Epoch is like a like maybe five to eight hour process. Yeah. Well, getting to monoliths, like it still takes a long time to get to 100. Sure, but like yes, getting out of getting getting your build online is like five to eight hours. Yeah, I mean honestly, getting your getting your build online getting your build online is like two hours. Maybe yeah, getting your build online is like two two to three hours. Getting your build functional, like getting to the point where you are explicitly optimizing your build and like really starting to push its limits is like five to eight. And yeah. It, it makes a huge difference because it's like five to eight hours. And part part of it is with PoE, like I'm tabbing out every five minutes to figure out what's the next node I'm supposed to take. Uh. Yeah, I mean, that that is one benefit of me having played variants of this build so many times that a lot of the pathing is the same. So it's all stuff that I could probably do on my own. Yeah. And I just, like, I've never played the same build in Path of Exile twice. The closest I I came was, this didn't work last league. Let me try it again because they've made changes. In Last Epoch, the build that I've played the most is something with Warpath. And I have built three very different versions of Warpath. But, like, I'm still playing Warpath and the pathing is still basically the same. Yeah, I think think my thing, and this is sort of my thing with uh, Path of Exile as well, is like when I came into this experiment, I was like, all right, what is the like base level knowledge I need to play this game? And I got a l- I got a lot thrown at me. And then mostly was like, hey, maybe you should follow a build guide. In Last Epoch, I know enough to like look at basically anything and be like, I can figure out how this works. Yeah. And it's a really it's a really good feeling to know that your version of this is both 
uniquely yours and valid. Even if it's not uniquely mine, it's usually because it, usually I'm not coming up with something too creative. I'm just being like, yeah, this item's fun. How would I how would I build something around this? And then I come to something that is like probably a build somebody else has come to because they're kind of intuitive. The biggest challenge that I have with my adventures in Warpath is really with a Warpath build, there's only like three useful abilities at any given time. And I have five abilities and I keep trying to find something that would also be useful to, to take up these other spots. And I never find it. Is it time to talk about Valentine Reversal? I, I mean, Volatile say, Reversal is like the Swiss Army knife, and I was specifically trying not to use it, but also, like, it's probably the correct uh, choice. Unfortunately, if you are a class that is a um, Sentinel, you probably yeah. want Volatile Reversal. Like, I mean, I went Paladin because uh, Holy Aura is just really good for providing a buff. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And right now I've got uh, lunge as my movement, but I'm contemplating removing lunge and oh, are putting you also, healing. Are you smiting on melee? I am smiting on melee. I am using the sword that every so uh, upon hit, there's a chance of casting a smite. Yeah. And then there also, what is that in? Is it so in? Yeah. So basically, it's a brand new sword that came in this this past league uh, or this cycle that just happened. Um, and I'm using it, and I'm using a fire starter's torch so that I am igniting things and smiting them, and the ignites spread, and life is good. And I kill things extremely fast, but also, like, I feel like there's a bunch of abilities that I'm just not using, really. Like, I've got Sigils of Hope, but also, like, casting it sucks because I have to stop channeling to cast it. Um, I have a ring that auto-casts it every 10 seconds, but it doesn't work as well as I would love it to. But yeah, like, I mean, I get into these places where, like, eh, I don't know. Like, it works. I can probably get all the way through into higher corruption with this thing. But also, like, I I wish I could make other abilities either instance or cast whenever I am already spinning. I don't know why anyone would choose Rebuke. That one's a weird one to me. I have used that while leveling. Um, it can do a kind of silly amount of damage. You, you know, can block with it. Yeah, but you, like, you channel it up and then it, it releases a big explosion. Yep. I mean, that has value. It also uh, gives you an absurd amount of damage reduction while you're channeling it. But, like, it's a, def it's a purely defensive ability. Like, if you aren't using it for its defensive abilities, I don't think you want to take it, basically. Right, yeah. Or regen. It, it can also provide that particular point in your build. Yeah, I've gone down through most of the abilities that Paladins can have looking to see, can I make this instant? Can I somehow make it work while I'm spinning? <laughs> and most of them don't. I know that my next, uh, my only, my next build in Last Epoch is going to be probably Paladin, because I'm going to go dual shields. I got one of the new, uh, I got one of the new uh, item drops. Um, Which the one? one that's like, please make shuriken. It's somebody's claws, but it's like, hey, let's push shurikens even harder. Ooh, Maybe what type? What type of item is it? It's gloves. If I remember correctly, Shuriken was already pretty much there. So. Yeah, I was about to say, so you can also go Bow's Anarchy? Yes. It pairs with Bow's Anarchy. It adds more Shuriken projectiles. I don't have it in front of me, but somebody's it's somebody's claws. Uh, but it, it looks to be a lot of fun, and I meant to play a rogue last time. And didn't. I, I mean... You missed I the Falcon. You missed the Falconer trade. I played so many rogues last time. I Falconer was not my style, but that's understandable. Uh, but I still want to play. I still want to play that class because it's because it seemed cool. It is very cool. I just am trying not to play like three hundred mages. I as they fixed sorcerer. I was going to say that's like me trying not to play a uh, four primalists and failing. 
I really want to get the Raptor Sword because I want to play the Raptor Squad. Yeah, and I have one with no LP, but at some point, like, yeah, whatever. We, <laughs> we, we, would, we would have to, you know, accrue enough trade points for me to swap it over. But yeah, I've got one. I, I do wish that there was, like, I really like going into town. That's the thing is, like, I am having so much, like, I could not have given one iota about the graveyard last league. Right. Yeah. The graveyard was a dud mechanic for me and like made even worse by the fact that it was a dud mechanic that was like probably broken in ways I hated. Like I felt bad for not using it because it was extremely overpowered, but I could not possibly be bothered to figure out how to gravecraft anything. Well, and even people, uh even if you were on the even if you knew how to use it properly, it wasn't guaranteed, but people did a bunch of completely terrible things with it yeah i mean and and fox it was had, just fox had a shrine to i'm never doing this again in his right. uh, sash <laughs> yeah it was an awful awful scepter that had like plus one melee gems on it for a rf weapon like yeah it was um it was really good at specific kinds of crafts so like it was really good at doing tri-element bows and as a result Near perfect tri element bows were dirt cheap, lastly. Um, but like anything more tricksy than that, or like anything with gym levels on it, was kind of hell. Um, but also, like, it was just miserable either having to mule all of the corpses around in your bank or try and trade for them individually and then trade for like 80 of them at a time. It was just awful. It was sounded, awful. Uh, hearing hearing y'all talk about it sounded just misery. It was it was yeah because the best crafts like took up I think were eighty five slots in the graveyard, and to do it correctly, you wanted to use all eighty five, and they're all individually itemized things that you would I, have to figure out how to search for them. And I do not regret skipping last week. No, you really shouldn't. Like, honestly, uh, A, they, it's possibly why we now have uh, certain currencies being able to be traded just, like, at an auction house. Because last league's trade got so toxic. Like, like I, no the, one wanted to trade anything because... And, and, like, the joke is, I think the guy went, what, an entire like a hundred whispers yeah, without any yeah. response. Yeah. yeah the, that's the, the, the producer or, or I mean the lead of, of POE one went like a hundred and then he was recruiting other people to message people. And I don't know how many they went and he couldn't get like catalysts. Um, so now I, like, there is a, basically a Guild Wars two style listing for auction, non fungible for fungible items, catalysts, fossils, whatever. The thing that I think is sad, though, is like Necropolis and Lake of Calandra are both cursed leagues, but they both had a kind of cool idea in them that just wasn't implemented well. Like, well, I have I good news about one of those. Well, OK, like, but that's not the part I liked about Calandra, like okay, the mirrors. The I liked, um, I liked build, build, building your own build your lake is the part I liked. Yeah, the build your lake didn't come in to this. That's fair. Just, just the reward from Build Your Lake, um, but like I liked Build Your Lake, and it was cool if it wasn't broken. Like there were just it was some really, really painful. It worked right. Like there were some just really painful nodes that you should never take. And but like, had they iterated on also, that, I think like, there was like a lot of things in the game. It was not very well messaged how anything worked. Right. I mean, like, I think had they iterated on it, there was probably a fun system there, or it could be fun. Similarly, I thought I think it's the better all than the temple, which absolutely. is a system that's been around for a long time. It was a better version of temple, but the other one, the thing from Necropolis that I really liked were the all flames, where you could like swap out monsters on your map for special kinds of monsters. I thought that was kind of cool. You know, like, so if I need to farm you know beyond currency i could swap out 
individual mobs that can spawn on the mob or the map with like a beyond type mob that could drop, you know, corrupted currency. I feel like, so I don't know if this was, so I'm going to step back. Cause I was like, I, maybe I didn't get those, but like, I feel like you would have to either really message what the monsters you're uh, spawning drop, which in some cases they did, like when they were spawning breach packs, which I thought was cool. Right. It, they they specifically called it out on the thing like this. This drops catalysts. This drops tainted currency. This drops gems. This drops, you know, it, like, and, and, and those kinds of mobs were really cool. Like, the meat sacks that you could abuse because they had high rarity on them. Those were less cool. <laughs> that is how we got another league in a row where squires were like too, too, uh, too divine. They were even cheaper than that. Like when I picked mine up, I paid less than a divine for it. <laughs> and I only bought it because why the hell not? What else? Like I, I want one for my standard inventory. It's a toy to play with in standard at some point. I mean, so far, this seems like a significantly better league. I really enjoy the town. I mean, the state of the game is better than uh, Andra, like the just general state of the game. And the town seems cool. Also, melee buffs seem pretty good. We still have yet to see how those shake out, but yes. I mean, I did a bad idea and I leveled RF as melee. I probably won't ever do this again. I've but also... now messed around with several different things to level a shadow through Act 1. And uh, I think this might be my new favorite. Uh, Explosive Trap is pretty solid. I like it better than Stormblast Mine. Okay. Explosive Trap is real good. Um, If I'm leveling a caster and I can get my hands on it, um, uh, Stormbrand of Indecision is real good for leveling. I guess you would technically have access to that way earlier than you should, huh? Yeah. I mean, if you're willing to run the first lab... I mean, like, if, if you have access to it, then yeah, you can... Yeah, but you can equip it real early. And it's especially if you're if you're if you can twink this character and put on like two of the perpetual whatever maces the the lightning looking ma- uh, scepters. Yes, those are good. And just run amok with Stormbrand of Indecision. <laughs> like I'm pretty sure it's just a better version of Stormbrand. It wasn't the one that ended up in the broken builds, though, right? It was the other one. No, it was the one that ended up in the broken builds, which was also nerfed, but it wasn't nerfed into the ground. Like people seem to think it was, but yeah, no, it was absolutely the one that people were building just stupidly broken builds around. Okay. So this next topic, I absolutely misread the first time and I keep misreading it every time I look at it. Um, Fallout London is out. Fallout London is out. This is uh, a long awaited total conversion mod. It's a total um, conversion mod for Fallout 4. Fallout 4 total conversion mod. That's like, what if you had Fallout in London? Um, and I have been down as I have been down on this show about total conversion mods previously. Um, but they're not all like this one is good. Like they have put a lot of work into it. It's it needs some patches. And as with most total conversion mods, it's a bit of an effort to make it like work. <laughs> yeah that's an understatement but uh this one requires less absurd work than many uh, I, also, I also hear it's easier if you are starting it with not the steam version yes this is true and it's mm, like what yeah version it, does it want uh, it's also available for pretty cheap on gog yeah if you a drm free version gog um, is a pretty i think good. you can also buy it some way from the like bethesda launcher or whatever but I have yeah, no idea G- on that GOG one. GOG is your real answer. If you want to do like really extreme modding stuff, GOG is kind of your your way to do it just because um, it's You can very, get any version of anything. Yeah. You, well, you can get any version of anything and also like it's pretty open about its, um, what's this called? The file accessibility is pretty open. So it's it's much easier to get into it. Um, but what a little I've played is pretty cool, actually. Like I haven't haven't done much. It's it's only like two days out, but uh, it was it was a surprise because I thought that this was a fairly cursed mod that was never going to actually come out. But here we are. 
Uh, plus, it's just it's cool to see like the level. You know, it's got voice actors. It's got the whole deal. Uh, so it's pretty. It's pretty cool to see. Uh, I'll probably try to get more time in. And I can talk about it in somewhat more detail, but uh, I think that it. I think that it benefits a lot from not trying to be a wiki in a mod. Mm. <laughs> like it is not it is not trying to show it's not trying to show off how much Fallout lore they know. And and I think that's a I think that's important. Are they telling an interesting story? I mean, I'm not that far. I'm not far enough into it to really answer that question. Uh you don't get a full picture of the story like right off the bat. It doesn't have the like really high production values of like the Fallout 4 intro, but like I wouldn't expect it to. Like what does? But yeah, if you've got a copy of Fallout 4 and feel like more Fallout, but maybe not Boston and maybe not Bethesda writing, uh, I don't know, check it out. Probably worth your time. At least a look. It's also got some pretty good the the Fallout 4 like total conversion mod community has come a long way. Like Sim Settlements is Sim Settlements 2 is pretty impressive, for example, which is a total conversion mod that like turns the game into SimCity in a in a very weird, huge way. How difficult is the actual install process? It wasn't too bad. I mean, I'm used to installing mods, but I didn't find it too bad. Um like, you do have to install some stuff in some particular place. Like, it's not just plug-and-play, but it wasn't, like, an owner's terrible process. Steam, it took, Steam like, Workshop has spoiled us. The what? Steam Workshop has spoiled us. Yes, it's not Steam Workshop. <laughs> but it's I not, mean, like, even Nexus Mods Vortex or whatever that thing is called yeah, does a pretty good job of installing stuff. But, like, if you're talking no, about manually copying We're going files back to the over, old days. Yeah, it's 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 from it's a, really hard to do a TC mod. Yeah, like I've played it's the a, Baldur's Gate two, like the Baldur's Gate trilogy mod. It takes some effort. P.S. If you want to play the older Baldur's Gate games, do this, do this thing, so you can play one Siege of Dragon Spear and two in Baldur's Gate 2's engine. Oh, nice. That's pretty slick. Yeah, I I should do this thing because like there was a massive engine upgrade between those two games. But yeah, it took me a little bit to just like read up and hit the buttons as needed, but it wasn't like uh it wasn't onerous. I had a harder I had a dramatically harder time getting like Fallout New Vegas to work at all <laughs> installing a total convert this total conversion mod. Which is probably a low which is probably a bar, but even so. Yeah, like I, I totally misread this as Fallen London and it's made me think while we're sitting here how much I would love to have a version of Fallen London that wasn't a somewhat janky web game. And also one that didn't have like turn limitations. Isn't that just some guys? Some of C? <laughs> I mean, like, yes, sort of. Fallen London is someone less interested in killing you than some of C. Yes, that. Fallen London is a much more slow paced game than that. I love Fallen London, but then the turn-based thing always ends up frustrating me. You're just making me think a bit about Grand, Grand Blue Fantasy and how it is still just a web app. Even yep. to this day. Yep. It installs a launcher sort of thing, but it's just a web app. I never made it Speaking super of gotcha far games, though, uh, I don't think we talked about Zenless Zone Zero. No, we haven't. No. And I don't have a ton to say about it because I started playing it on my iPad when I did not, did not have access to my computer. Uh, and while that's a thing you can do, I can't really recommend it unless you have a controller. <laughs> it is much better with a controller. This is very true. But yeah, uh, another action game for Mihilio after uh, they took their break and made a turn-based RPG in between. We can't be stopped. <laughs> and like, aesthetically and thematically, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I I really like I with this one a lot. The music's great and just the just the going around town stuff. I don't, it just it's really cool. I haven't been enthusiastic about picking up another gotcha game, but if it's that good, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, it looks yeah. very cool. I will admit, I, I have not s- played it. Yeah, I kinda, so, I sell me on the game as somebody who's not played it but has heard good things from friends. 
Let's yeah. I, I have to admit that I skipped, I kind of skipped uh, whatever their last one was. Honkai Star Rail? Yeah, like, it had a weird install problem, and I just never bothered figuring out how to fix it. Also, have you, did you do all of the Harbinger stuff? The new Last Epoch Endgame Bell? Uh, I mean, I've been doing it. All right. Did you beat the uh, Pinnacles? Oh, hell no. I, I don't care about Pinnacle bosses. I'm a, I'm a mapper and a delver. I don't care about bossing. Wait, you like you didn't? Did you do like the last ruin, Age of Winter, Spirits of Fire, and fight the new boss at the end of those? I have been making my way through the monoliths the first time. I okay. am on the last three. I actually, I have two more to go until I unlock Empowered again. Gotcha. I was very surprised to have a special new boss after a boss that I had beaten trivially before with a whole new zone and area and storyline. It kind of made sense because it felt like there was a space there where they intended to put something. They put something in that space. Now, I don't know how to do this thing that it's telling me to do. I feel like that is the way of uh, these types of games. Get a quest that is completely unintuitive. View the Forgotten Knights faction panel while in the Shattered Road. Uh, I mean, that's yeah, probably open... in the factions. Yeah, why? Panel. Yeah, they added a new faction that is independent of the other previous two that they added previously. Um, oh. Just for the new stuff. Okay, this is the this is the end game that is why corruption matters. Got it. Yes. Yes. They yeah. they finally added a reason for corruption to exist. Yes. Got it. Other than supposedly better loot. Supposedly better loot from Orbis, mostly. Orbis drops work still are corruption gated, which is fine. Um, you want the stupid amulet, you can you can farm Orbis high corruption. Other than that, like there is this thing in Path of Exile where if you can just do stuff faster, it's better than being able to do harder stuff. Right. Yeah. And Last Epoch was running into this problem in a big way. Yeah. Oh, so it was better to be low corruption was what people were finding? Yeah, it was just better to like hover through. around like 100-ish. Yeah. 100, 200. Better to blaze through low corruption than bother with high corruption. That makes there, sense. No reason to push corruption like as high as you possibly could. Yeah, I just got to it while we were on the show and I'm... I'm suddenly interested in doing corrupted monoliths, which I wasn't before. <laughs> yeah, I've not gotten there yet. I I know that faction exists, and I know roughly what it's doing, but I've not gotten there. I've I've talked to the Forgotten Knight in End of Time. Well, you can always talk to the Forgotten Knight. I love her. She yes, is they, so sassy. They finally added a purpose for this NPC that has been around since the start. Also gave her a look glow up, like... She definitely <laughs> looks cooler now. Yeah. No, it's, it's very satisfying to talk with her after completing all of the, uh, the monoliths. That was probably a show looking at the clock. Any uh, other short topics anybody wants to talk about? I'll be at Gen Con next week. If you're at Gen Con, you can message me at Coder22. We can say hi. Coder22 on what? Just about everything. <laughs> <laughs> Just try it on your on your thing of choice, and maybe it'll work. Go try it on my hip top. ICQ. <laughs> Google Wave. Pour one out for ICQ. Um, some friends of mine made a game. It's called Moth Planet. So if Moth. you like platformers with interesting music, interesting movement, give it a shot. Uh, Moth like flappy we... bugs. Yes. Oh yeah. Are we talking quap interesting or no? No, oh. they actually want you to play this game. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, last or next week, uh, Blogus starts in earnest. We've got, I don't know, 50, 60 blogs signed up currently. Last year we had 103. Um, usually as soon as the posts start rolling in, people start signing up. So I have no idea how many there will be, but if you would like to participate, um, check out my blog. The thing I said last year is still true. Uh, Twitter is still kind of. Nah. Yeah, Twitter's kind of toast. So, like, maybe Twitter's it's a thing. Somehow more toast than you said last year. Yeah, it's, like... It's it, only gotten worse. Yeah, I mean, like, I I reactivated my account to post about Blogist, and, like, I hardly recognize it. 
Yeah, it's just, it's, I don't know. Pretty much everybody that I know is either on Blue Sky or Mastodon at this point. One of yeah. the two. Or both. Yeah. Some people are in threads, but also threads is kind of just text-based Instagram. If you are on both Mastodon and Blue Sky, it is very funny to note that uh, both of, more Mastodon than Blue Sky, but both of them have memes about the other one. Yeah. Uh, which is sort of funny to me. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the show, and we will see you again next week. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you.